Right, so we've just come back from Mamburi Beach, up with Marks, with fishermen. And we had quite a successful time up there, it wasn't easy, but I was really happy with the way the whole thing turned out. Today I'm gonna to show you a bunch of octopus, which is delicious, looks really pretty, tastes fantastic. So the first thing to do is get my octopus cooking. So I'm just gonna get it into some boiling water with a bit of lemon juice in it. And it's got a little bit of red wine vinegar in as well. 35 to 40 minutes. Plastic bottle. I'm just gonna take the top off it, just very roughly with a knife here. Discard that, and that's the bit you need there. So I'm just gonna portion this into quarters. Yep. Now octopus has a lot of gelatin in it and you use that natural gelatin now to set it in a bottle like this. As it goes in you just kind of press it down, getting compact. Now cut the bottle into quarters first and then again into eight, so you've got eight cuts. The next stage is to press this all down so it's very, very tightly compacted. Sam, plastic wrap please. I might need your help here. You must keep the pressure on it. There we go, done. That can now go in the freezer, fridge, freezer, either way. I'll stick it in the freezer because I just think it slices better when it's on the slicing machine. The rest of my ingredients, beautiful cassava, love it. And here I've got some desiccated coconut. As opposed to using fresh coconut, I just thought I'd use desiccated coconut in this. Now the cassava and the coconut are going to go into a very light salad that I'm going to make. So I'm just going to put that on there. And I'm just going to stick it under a grill and get it toasted off till it browns. Be careful with this stuff because it burns very, very quickly. And then it's no good, you've got to toss it away and start again. Right, so I'm just going to split the cassava down the middle here like that. And then I want to make really tiny chips out of it. Give them over to Sam. And he's just very simply going to deep fry them for me. Sam, there you go. Next thing i got here is a little bit of beetroot. And again, I'm going to cut very small chips out of it like that. And they will cook at the same rate as the cassava. This stuff stains like you wouldn't believe. Now the next thing I want to do is make a dressing for this. I've got there some smoked chili sauce. It's kind of a secret recipe of mine. There's about four or five different chilies in here, which we smoke using a very specific wood. It's sweet, smoky, lemony. It's got rosemary in there, garlic, fantastic sauce. And it's a great base for doing lots of things with. I can't give you the full recipe for that, or I'd have to come and kill you. Olive oil, lemon juice. Now, when you're making a dressing, generally three to one, oil to acid. And then a good spoon, smoked chili sauce. You can get smoked chili sauces. You can buy them, a lot of them are very good and they'll do just what they have to do here. Look that through there, lemony, tangy, smoked chili comes through there and that's perfect. Just add a little bit of chopped fresh parsley in there and dill. You can add a lovely freshness to this. There we go, dressing done. You can see it's quite thick but that's exactly the way I want it. So I'm just going to knock my salad up very quickly now. Bean shoots, I love them, crunchy, loads of flavour, texture. Desiccated coconut, sounds weird, it's going to work, trust me. I've got my cassava, which has been deep fried and it's nice and crispy. So it's got such a good flavour. My deep fried beetroot. And finally, to bring this all together, add a bit of colour and a little bit of a softer texture, we've got some lovely rocket here. A handful of the bean shoots, like that, crispy cassava sticks, all my beetroot, a little bit of the coconut. I'm going to save some of this coconut until later as well, just as a final garnish. Let's give those a toss and put a little bit of my dressing over them and really mix it thoroughly through. I'll just stick that in there for now. So the final addition to my octopus carpaccio is going to be what I call anchovy melba or a melba toast made out of anchovies. I've got a ciabatta here. Take two very thin slices, cut off the crusts, trim them nicely. So I'm just going to spread some anchovy onto one slice of my bread. Then I'm going to put the other slice on top of it like that. Squish the living daylights out of it. <sighs> Beautiful. Now I've got a hot pan on here, a little bit of olive oil. I'm literally just going to make a crouton out of this and just fry it off. So it's nice and brown on both sides. You've got a crunchy, anchovy, salty crouton. So that will literally cook for about a minute each side. Aha! Thank you very much, sir. My octopus has been in the freezer for a while. The reason we do it frozen is so that it slices a lot better. Stick the octopus on there. Now what you get is this absolutely beautiful, thin, lovely, delicious slice of octopus. I'm gonna get my dressing down first. Just enough to cover the bottom of the plate. You just want it to be a subtle flavor underneath the octopus. We're going to layer the whole plate with slices of our octopus. You can do this with a very sharp knife. You won't get as thin slices as I have here, but it still works fine. Just a case of finishing it off. Get a nice handful of our beautiful salad like that. With our beautiful marble toast on top. And there you have it. You've got the lovely thin slices of octopus, wonderful dressing underneath them, salad with all the layers, textures, and colors in there. This lovely melba toast on top. And we'll just finish it off with a little bit of desiccated coconut. Just give it that added texture. Wonderful.